Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 16 of the chapter Solutions. Let us now solve a few numerical problems based on the colligative property relative lowering of vapor pressure. The first question that I am going to solve for you is the in-text question 2.9. The question is that vapor pressure of pure water at 298 Kelvin is 23.8 millimeters mercury. 50 grams of urea, that is NH2CO NH2, is dissolved in 850 grams of water. Calculate the vapor pressure of water and its relative lowering. Now, we know according to Raoult's law for relative lowering of vapor pressure, what is the formula? The formula is that if P1 naught is the vapor pressure of the pure component, pure solvent, minus P1, which is the vapor pressure of the solvent in the solution, and divided by P1 naught, this gives you relative lowering of vapor pressure. So that is what is asked. The relative lowering of vapor pressure is equal to X2, that is more fraction of the component uh, of the solute. Now X2 can further be written as, what is X2? X2 is the number of moles of 2 divided by the number of moles of component 1 and number of moles of component 2. Which can be written as, what is number of moles? The number of moles of anything is its mass divided by its molar mass. So N2 would be the mass of 2 divided by the molar mass of 2 upon N1 would be the mass of 1 divided by molar mass of 1 plus the mass of 2 divided by the molar mass of 2. Now this is the formula that we will be using, we know, for relative lowering of vapor pressure. This gives us the relative lowering of vapor pressure and P1 is the vapor pressure of the sol solvent in the solution. So now what all do we have in the question and how do we arrive at this formula? Let us first write down what all is given to us. Vapor pressure of pure water at 298 Kelvin. Now water is the solvent, so water becomes component 1. And urea becomes your component 2. Right? Water and urea are your two components. So 50 grams of urea you have is dissolved in 850 grams of water. So water W1 is equal to 850 grams and W2, the mass of urea given to us is 50 grams. Okay? And is dissolved in 850 grams of water and the vapor pressure of pure water, vapor pressure of pure water means P1 naught given to us is 23.8 millimeter mercury. Right? Now in order to solve this, we need the molar masses of both the components. In the formula, look, we have P1 naught. We have to calculate P1. We have to calculate all of this. And in order to calculate all of this, the relative lowering, we must have the values of M1 and M2. Rest, everything we already know. So let us calculate M1 and M2. What is M1 and M2? M1 and M2 are the molar masses of the solvent and the solute. So molar mass M1, that is molar mass of water, is of H2O, there are two atoms of hydrogen, the mass of one atom of hydrogen is 1 into 2 plus the mass of one atom of oxygen is 16 which is equal to 18 grams per mole. And what about the molar mass of urea N2 of NH2? CO NH2 is the formula. So the mass of nitrogen is 14, so you'll have 14 and there are two nitrogens, so into two, plus how many hydrogens are there? There are four hydrogens and the mass of one hydro hydrogen is one and there are four hydrogens, plus there's one carbon, the mass one carbon, the mass of one carbon is 12. Uh, I reversed the sequence here. So the mass of carbon is 12 and you have one carbon, plus the mass of oxygen is 16 and you have one oxygen. And when you solve all of this, when you find out the sum of this, this will come out to be 60 grams per mole. Right? So now we have M1 and M2 also. So all we have to do is substitute these values in the formula. And first calculate the relative lowering of vapor pressure. And then we can calculate the value of P1 by further uh, solving it. So let us do this. P1 naught is 23.8 millimeter mercury. 
minus P1, which is to be calculated upon. P1 not again is 23.8 millimeter mercury is equal to W2 is 50 grams upon the mass of molar mass is 60 grams, 60 grams per mole upon you have 850 grams of water divided by 18 grams per mole of water plus 50 grams upon 60 grams per mole. Now you've substituted all the values. From this you will calculate first this that is the whole value which will give you the relative lowering of vapor pressure. So I'm now going to ignore the units because we know for pressure that is P, we, the units that we'll be getting will be mmHg and uh, for, for relative lowering also and for P. Therefore, we can ignore the rest of these because they actually get cancelled out. So, uh, I, I'm not going to write the units in this step now. So, 23.8 minus P1 upon 23.8 is equal to 50 upon 60 is equal to 50 upon 60 is 0 0.83 0 0.83 and 850 upon 18 is uh, when you solve this is 47.22 47.22 plus 0 0.83 and when you solve this amount, it comes out to be equal to 0 0.0173, 0 0.0173. Now, 0 0.0173 is the relative lowering of vapor pressure. Because what is relative lowering of vapor pressure? P1 naught minus P1 upon P1 naught is relative lowering. So you've calculated the relative lowering. Now, you, this part is solved. You need to find out the vapor pressure of water in the solution state. That is, you need to find out P1. You can calculate P1 from this now. So, P1 or minus P1 would be equal to 0 0.0173 or 23.8 minus P1 would be equal to 0 0.173 into 23.8 and from this P1 would become equal to therefore P1 would be equal to 0 0.0173 into 23.8 the sign here will change when this goes up here since I'm removing the negative here this will become a this will remain a positive so this will become plus 23.8 right and because this was a negative P1 and it should have been minus 23.8 if it was positive but since I changed the sign here this becomes positive and when you solve this you come down to P1 turns out to be equal to 23.4 23.4 and millimeters of mercury right that is the unit for pressure. So that is the vapor pressure of water in the solution state. So now I'll solve a textbook question after this. That is your exercise question. Give me a moment to write down the question. All right. Now this is question 2.17 of your NCRT exercise. The question reads, the vapor pressure of water is 12.3 kilopascals at 300 Kelvin. You have to calculate the vapor pressure of one molar solution one molar solution with a non-volatile solute in it. Now, in this case, the solute is not mentioned. So, in the previous problem, we knew the solute was uh, urea and therefore we really went into the calculation of it, uh, M1 and M2. In this, what is the form of Raoult's law that we will be using is that we know relative lowering of vapor pressure according to Raoult's law is P1 naught minus P1 upon P1 naught is equal to x2 where x2 is the mole fraction of the solute now we cannot go further than this because we do not know the identity of the solute we just know it is a non-volatile solute so what is given to us and how do we arrive at this in order to calculate what do we have to calculate the vapor pressure of water is this you have to calculate the vapor pressure of the solution so you have to calculate p1 so for that you must know x2 and p1 naught p1 naught is given to us which is P1 naught is equal to 12.3 kilopascals because it is the vapor pressure of pure water at 12.3 is 12.3 kilopascals at 300 Kelvin 
and when you say one molar solution one molar solution means that one mole of the solute whatever the solute is one mole of it is present in 1000 grams of the solvent and the solvent is water so in order to come to the mole fraction we must know the number of moles of both the components we know the number of moles of the solute is one because it is one molar solution but the solvent that is water is 1000 grams its mass is given to us and the number of moles how can you calculate the number of moles is mass given that is w1 m1 is equal to w1 upon m1 the molar mass so we can calculate the number of moles of water from this the mass of water is 1000 grams and the molar mass of water is 18 grams per mole from this you can calculate the grams and grams get cancelled you get the number of moles which is equal to 55.56 moles right 55.56 is the number of moles of water and what is the number of moles of the non-volatile solute one so from this you can calculate x2 x2 that is mole fraction would be equal to the number of moles of solvent that is um, one one mole because the number of the number of moles of solute upon number of moles of solvent that is water is 55.56 moles mole plus one right x2 is 1 upon 56.56 then and when you solve this x2 comes out to be equal to 0 0.0177 0 0.0177 is the and the mole mole get cancelled that is the mole fraction that you get so we have the mole fraction we have p1 naught let's let us now substitute the values p1 naught is 12.3 kilopascals minus p1 now the unit of p1 would be in kilopascals because the pressure given to us is in kilopascals upon P1 naught is again 12.3 and X2 has been calculated is equal to 0 0.0177, right? From this, you get 12.3 minus P1 is equal to 0 0.0177 into 12.3. And when you solve this, how much does it come out to be equal to? It comes out to be equal to 0 0.2177, 0 0.2177. And from this, you can calculate P1 by moving this, shifting it to the other side. And when you calculate P1, it comes out to be 12.0823. 12.0823. So you can ignore this and uh, bring down the uh, precision to 0. Point. The significant figures should only be till here, to till two places of decimal. So it comes out to be approximately equal to 12.08. And what will be the units for the pressure? They'll be kilopascals. Right? So this was question 2.17. Now I'll solve just one more numerical problem before I wrap up this video. Give me a moment to write it down. Now this is question 2.18 of your NCRT textbook exercise. The question reads, calculate the mass of a non-volatile solute whose molar mass is 40 grams per mole which should be dissolved in 114 grams of octane to reduce its vapor pressure to 80%. Again, we know that according to Raoult's law, relative lowering of vapor pressure is given by P1 naught minus P1 upon P1 naught is equal to X2, right? And um, the molar mass of one of the components is given and you are asked to calculate the mass of a non-volatile solute. The mass of a non-volatile solute, if the solute is 2 and the solvent that is, uh, is 1, solvent is 1 and the volatile solute is 2, then the mass of non-volatile solute would be represented as W2. W2 is asked. Okay, you have to calculate the mass of a non-volatile solute. The molar mass of the non-volatile solute, that is M2, is given to you, which is 40 grams per mole which should be dissolved in 114 grams of octane. So octane is the solvent. What is the formula for octane? Oct means eight. So it is C8, H will be eight twos are 16 plus two, 18. So C8, H18 is octane. And 
the mass of octane that is W1 is given to us is equal to 114 grams of octane and the vapor pressure is reduced to 80% of the original vapor pressure. So if the original vapor pressure was P1 naught, then P1, what would P1 be? If the original vapor pressure is P1, uh, P1 naught, P1 should be 80%, that is 80 upon 100 of P1 naught. So 80 upon 100 would be 0 0.8 P1 naught is P1, right? So now these are the values that we have. We need to calculate the molar mass of octane, right? From this, you should know the molar mass. You have to calculate the mass of non-volatile solute whose molar mass is given to us, which should be dissolved in 114 grams of octane to reduce its vapor pressure to 80%. So what will be the molar mass of octane? That is M1. There are 12 uh, is the mass of carbon and there are eight carbon atoms plus 12 into 8 plus uh, 18 hydrogens so the mass of one hydrogen is one and there are 18 of them so the molar mass of octane will come out to be equal to 114 grams per mole so 114 grams per mole so the mass and the molar mass both are the same according to the problem so let us now substitute these values uh, where x2 is equal to the number of moles of the second component upon number of moles of 1 plus number of moles of 2 which is equal to the number of moles of the solute would be equal to the mass of solute upon molar mass of solute upon the mass of solvent upon molar mass of solvent plus mass of solute upon molar mass of solute. Now let us substitute these values in this formula. P1 naught is P1 naught minus P1 is 0 0.8 P1 naught upon P1 naught is equal to W2 is to be found out upon M2 is 40 grams upon the W1 is 114 upon 114 plus W2 upon 40 grams. 40. Let's uh, avoid the units. As you see, 114 upon 114 is 1. So it makes the whole. When you're trying to find out the mole fraction of a thing, the if you get in the denominator one of the components is 1, it means it is almost all of it. And the solute is very, very little in comparison to this. Therefore, this the value, the amount of solute here can be neglected. And therefore, the formula here, since it is much lesser in amount, the formula reduces to only this. And when it does so, the 114 by 114 gets cancelled, becomes equal to 1. And this now becomes equal to W2 upon 14 is equal to this. So, P1 naught, if you solve this, 0 0.8, 1 minus 0 0.8 is 0 0.2, P1 naught upon P1 naught then becomes equal to W2 upon 40. Now P1 naught and P1 naught get cancelled. From this you can calculate W2. W2 then becomes equal to 0 0.2 into 40 which is equal to 8 grams. Because the mass was given in grams, yeah. So this is equal to 8 grams. So that solves our problem. With this, I'll uh, finish this video. I hope you found it helpful. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.